Got another comparison video here. We'll go over some pouches. We got the Badger, and then we got the Diamondback. Um, two strong side pouches, and then we got two fastener side pouches. I'd like to go over just a few things, fit and finish, um, different key features to just show some differences between them, maybe help some guys out if they are in the market for a higher end tool belt and they're just having a tough time deciding and they want to just see a comparison video. So I guess we'll get straight into it. We'll go with the strong side pouches first. So standard carpenter set and then we got the strong side from the artisan, I believe it's called the miter. Um, so right off the bat, you can see, got a bit more open space with the badgers. You got a bit more of a funnel shape, which from across the street might look cooler, but I think that these guys have a bit more of a better intuitive design considering that they have the bit index and they give you, you know, around about the same amount of tool storage. But I, I feel like personally, um, you know, Diamondback's winning out a little bit with the sleeves over here, your little tool slots. You get a bit more options over here than right here. But like I said, a bit more no nonsense of a setup with these guys. Um, very similar with the tape pouches um, and then as far as the edging is concerned obviously these guys are wrapping them wrapping them all the way around I feel like that is actually what is offering the more open kind of an action whereas these guys this is my setup this kind of has a tendency to collapse a bit more uh, you'll see it more on the uh, fastener side because you know, obviously this is gonna give you a bit more meat. You're gonna stay open once you're trained open. Um, realistically, I mean, if you wanna get down to it with how open they are, for me, it doesn't make too much of a difference. I mean, they give you these like sleeves on the outside. Now, if you're not using anything here, sure, you got a lot more open space. But once you throw some tools in here, they're pretty much the same. Fastener pouches, yeah, you're getting your hands in there a little better. Um, now, I guess we'll stick to strong side. I run, I'm handed a little weird, so we'll have to switch bags for this. Showing up good on camera. So they both offer you up a hammer sleeve. This comes standard. This is an add-on. Realistically, price point, once you get all this stuff together, it's about the same as getting a set of badgers. Just the only thing is you don't have to figure I need to buy that separate. All right. So one thing that they do differently, and I'll just say it out front, I prefer the badgers in this case. Um, there's no metal. You know what I mean? You got to chuck some. You got to chuck some bolts on for these guys. And with these guys, obviously they're sewn in, top and bottom. All right. So. If you're one of the guys that really wants to have your setup pretty straight up, maybe these guys would be your best bet. But if you want something where there's like no hinge point and you're feeling like, you know, you're like almost driving like a crappy stick shift or something like that, um, these guys are probably your better bet. Also, one thing that I've noticed, we set a decent amount of cabinets at work so there are times where I'm, it's not really the biggest deal, but I'm a little nervous at times if I'm like humping a cabinet in, into position, uh, just having that little bit of metal there. This obviously it's gonna lend a bit more uh, care to if you have like finished products in the area, you know, like I just said, um, running cabinets or something, maybe this would make a difference for you. Um, but like I was saying with the hinge points, once you get dialed in with these guys, you know, they're, they're pretty decent. I look to my left. This is a kid that I work with. I stole his belt for the weekend. He's slipping in and out a little bit easier than I am. Um, but if you have a wood handled hammer, can't imagine that you're going to be dealing with any issue. So quick and easy on that one. 
with the strong side pouches. Now, fastener side, like I was saying, I feel like it's more so not necessarily the fact that they're opened more, because these guys, you know, like once you really get these things trained, this is open pretty much as wide as you would need it. You know what I mean? Um, so I can't imagine that that's really going to make a huge difference. This definitely stays open for you a little better. Like if I, when we're just chucking our bags on the ground or whatever, these things come up, wrap around that kid's waist, and this thing is wide open right away. Whereas I got to like chuck my hand in there just to get it back open that much. Um, so now we'll go over, let's go over the bar sleeves because... This is one spot where I think Diamondback needs to do a bit of catching up, but that's just my opinion. We all know what opinions are like. So same deal. You got your, yourself a little hinge point. For me, not the biggest deal because you're just sleeving in bars. It's not like there's a rubber handle on my bar going in there. But one super key difference that I think Badger's winning on with this is Diamondback offers you up three slots side by side. So I'm not really doing any like flat, flat bars. My flat bars got some curvature to it. And then I'm having a lot of trouble with having my flat bar in there plus another bar. You know what I mean? Now with these guys, they have them stacked top and bottom. They're only offering you two, but for the $30 add-on, $30 add-on, this actually comes standard and you get one, two. No, it's actually just one. I thought it was two. Good thing. All right, so they offer you one, standard, and then you still get for the $30 extra, you know what I mean? Same deal with these guys. You get two other bar sleeves. Now, when this kid is running demo, he's got his flat bar in here turned away from his body, and he's still able to get a cat's paw, and he's picking it at everything a whole lot neater than I am. So. If we're doing this like it's a competition, I would say Badger's got the win there as well. But, <clears throat> so technically strong side, this is what I'm using on my left because of the bit index. I figure my punch goes in here, it just runs in tandem with the hammer. It makes sense for me to have ordered this up for my left side. So, one thing where I think Badger is really lacking is with these, let's see if we can get that to show up good, yeah. So with these guys right here, this is what they're like suggesting that you run your punch and your bits in. Now, I've noticed that there's plenty of times where when this kid Anthony chucks a little something something in here, it'll either fall through throughout the day and wind up in the bottom of the bag, making this kind of moot, and then also, my son Ryan runs his tape on this side, and he's about three weeks in on these bags, and these things are chewed up to hell. I think that this is a bit counterintuitive of a design that Badger has. It might be worth it for you guys to consider maybe chucking a little something something on here for us, or maybe doing what Diamondback does. Who knows? where you guys run a little bit of a bit index over here without having to special order that. That'd be pretty cool. Now, as far as getting your hands in and out, I mean, not really having a tough time. Like I said, this is obviously a bit more open. If you have bigger hands, probably a better bet for you. Um, one key thing to note with Badger versus Diamondback, with these slots in the strong side, these are actually pockets. There's a bottom to this, you know what I mean? Now with the badgers, hopefully we can get a clean look at this. There's actually no bottom to these. That's like my fingers in the middle, in the middle of the bag. Tough to get a good shot of that, but you'll, I guess you'll just have to take my word for it. There's no bottom, no bottom, no bottom, no bottom. The bottom of the bag is just the bottom of the bag. So if that matters for you, maybe you'd go Diamondback. I haven't noticed that any of the three guys that I bought these for are having an issue with that. Just something that's worth noting since we're doing a comparison. 
There is no bottom to these sleeves. It's just simply straight through to the bottom of the bag. So the same deal with your speed square slot, whereas with Diamondback, you have a straight up bottom to that. And if you're gonna be running fasteners in here, you're gonna be losing some back in here into your little speed square slot. Might be a little annoying for you. This guy in front of it, um, it actually has a bottom to that. So you won't be dealing with any of that if you're chucking tools in here. But if you're running like a lot of loosey screws or a lot of loose like maybe hand nails or something, you're gonna wind up getting a little junk back in here. Um, same deal with these guys right here. This is open and this is open, which if you're running something long, maybe that's good for you, but don't expect to be able to throw a pencil in here. You know what I mean? Um, same kind of deal with the little slots here. These guys are a bit thinner and these guys are a bit wider, whereas these guys are open a bit more and these guys are shut a little bit more. So, I mean, if you're handed like me, either way you're doing fine, but let's say you run large to extra large gloves, possibly your better bet, possibly. I mean, we're not comparing these to the like, um, what are they called? Like the side-by-side -side with Diamondback or the, you know, the mule pouch or anything. So probably maybe the mule or whatever would be a better bet for you if your hands are big and you just don't like badgers. Who knows? Um, just figured I'd go real quick with this. Hopefully that helps somebody out. You're in about the 400 hour range, 450 range to get a full setup from either one of these guys. So real quick, if there's any poor little kids that think that they really need to step their game up, just trust me when I say, give yourself some time, get yourself in maybe a husky bag, a set of husky bags or something like that. You get plenty of tech. You will be lacking a little bit with this bucket here. But what I did in the past was just chucked one of these guys in here, extra 10 bucks. You got all the tech you need. You're under a hundred bucks for this all day. Whereas like this guy right here, 110. This guy right here, I think it was like 140 plus add-ons, you know what I mean? And then with these guys, you're in the four, 450 range, plus you're gonna spend another 30 bucks for this guy here. This is a bit counterintuitive if you're running that naked, you know what I mean? You're gonna be uh, chunking up your pants a little bit and whatnot, so I bought all these guys the $30 extra, and this, I'm telling you right now, if this matters to you, you're running a lot of demo and whatnot, this is the way, definitely the way. I will be making my own bar sleeve that will be similar to this coming up soon if you're interested in checking that out and we're going to be cutting these out probably all three of the setups that i bought because this really is pretty counterintuitive these are getting chewed up pretty quick um if anybody sees this from badger i'd say that's my biggest gripe with you guys right here these little like elastic bit index things um if you really want my opinion the entire reason why I went with Diamondback was this pouch right here. I think that the miter pouch stand alone, especially if you're a guy who only runs one pouch and you want to try to keep it light, but still have quite a bit going on, this is probably your guy right here. At least it is for me. If I'm running one pouch, this is the way I'm doing it. Um, hopefully that was quick enough. That's going to be it for me. Hopefully somebody got something out of it. See you on the next one.